So what if I told you one of the biggest robberies in North American history, actually in Canada, might involve members of certain mafia groups, including the Hells Angels in Canada? What if I told you uh, the alleged perpetrators included people from uh, New Brunswick, uh, Vermont, Quebec, all over the place? If I told you the robbery didn't involve uh, uh, precious metals or money or cyber uh, information, you're going to say, well, is it what I think it is? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go over one of the sweetest robberies of all time, which has been officially called the Great Canadian Maple Syrup Heist. Now, this podcast is dedicated to the many followers of this channel who think I'm the most Canadian-sounding podcaster in North America in 2021. Well... If you think I sound uh, Acadian English, wait till you hear the machinations of this interesting uh, portion of the, the sweet syrup that, again, is a cliche around the world, but is big business in Canada. Now, the great Canadian maple syrup ice, Le Roi de Sorlope d'Arabe de Siècle, maple syrup ice in a century, is the informal name not been copyrighted at this point for a months long theft between 2011 and 2012 of nearly 3,000 tons, uh, uh, U.S. tons, not metric tons, of maple syrup valued at 18.7 million Canadian from a storage facility in Quebec. The uh, facility was operated by the Fédération of Quebec Maple Syrup Producers uh, translation, uh, Fédération de Producteurs et les SROCOLES de Québec, or the FPAQ, who, who represent 77% of the global maple syrup supply, and have been co compared to a cartel like OPEC. Adjusted for inflation in 2002, the heist is considered the most valuable in Canadian history. Now, the origins of the heist go back way, way back to the year after it was born. Now, in 1966, a group of maple syrup producers in Quebec participated in a joint plan to collectively market maple syrup. This offer inspired the formation of a larger agreement all across Quebec, which became known again as the Federation of Quebec Maple Syrup Producers. The FPAQ maintains a strategic reserve of maple syrup, again comparable to the oil reserves throughout the world, officially known as the International Strategic Reserve, ISR, across multiple uh, what do you call uh, pressurized or controlled warehouses in rural Quebec towns. Now, over the course of several months between 2011 and 2012, the contents of 9,571 barrels, valued again at 18.7 million, were stolen in a suspected insider job from a FPAQ facility in Saint Louis de Blanc in Quebec. The syrup was stored in unmarked white metal barrels inspected only once a year. Thieves used trucks to transport barrels to a remote sugar shack where they siphoned off the maple syrup, refilled the barrels with water, then returned them to the facility. As the operation progressed, the thieves started siphoning syrup directly off barrels in the reserve without refilling them. The stolen syrup was trucked to the south in Vermont and the east in New Brunswick through the, uh, the uh, what I call the, uh, the uh, Quebec Crossroads Edmonton region, where it was trafficked, trafficked in many small batches to reduce suspicion. It was typically sold to legitimate Sears syrup distributors who were unaware of its origin. Now, there was a CBC uh, documentary and podcast that talked about it and showed how to do it. Now, I guess uh, syrup in these barrels has a certain gross weight, a certain pressure, certain measurement, and has a certain sound. And I guess when the inspector went in, he noticed there was a discrepancy. I think it was the top barrels or the first several rows of what is considered you know, the, the, the quick to access. Now, in two, uh, the, uh, the discovery investigation happened in the fall of 2012 as the FPAQ took their annual inventory of syrup barrels. Now, Inspector Mike, Michel Govreau started climbing up the barrels and nearly fell, expected, expecting 600-pound barrels, but finding them to be empty. 
Police later recovered hundreds of barrels of the syrup from an exporter based in Kedgwick, New Brunswick, which is a known mafia-controlled territory in my section of northern New Brunswick. And if anybody in Kedgwick is complaining about that, well, I covered uh, the biker wars up there for five years and kidnapping, murder. Anyway, you're, it's a crime-ridden area, that's all I can say. Now, between... Uh, December 18th and December 20th, 2012, police arrested 17 men related to the, te the theft. Now, the alleged main perpetrators included Rich Richard uh, Vallier, born 1978, accused ringleader, sentenced in April 2007 to eight years in prison plus a $9.5 million fine with an extension to 14 years if the fine is not paid, your typical Canadian maple syrup ice judgment. Now, Remo Valliere, the father of Richard, was convicted of possession. Etienne Saint-Pierre, born 1943, is a New Brunswick-based syrup reseller. Avic Cano, born 1975, the insider whose spouse owned the FPAQ warehouse, sentenced to five years in prison, plus a $1.2 million fine. Now, Sebastian Joutra, a trucker involved in the transport of stolen syrup, served eight months in prison. Now, the theft has made major cultural references, references over the last few years in popular culture. Now, let's break them down for you. Now, the theft was featured in Netflix documentary series Dirty Money in Season 1, Episode 5, The Maple Syrup Heist. The Canadian folk band Trent Severin wrote a song, Stealing Syrup, Syrup based on the heist for the 2016 album Trillium, which is, a, of course, a Canadian-Ontario uh, reference. The theft is all alluded to in the television show Elementary, Season 5, Episode 13, Over a Barrel. In the episode, the barrels are shown being brought by a barge to a warehouse in New York, causing the disappearance of a particular gang. However, the gang is merely hiding in plain sight, selling smuggled maple syrup rather than smuggled cocaine. Now, the event is the subject of episode 14 of the Things I Learned Last Night podcast, as Jaron Myers and Tim Stone overviewed the event and discussed the FPAQ reserves. The uh, Again, it was sub subject of episode 96 of the Do Go On podcast, and comedians Jess Perkins, Matt Stewart, and Dave uh, Warnicke discussed the event. Uh, it is also mentioned in the show White Collar, season 5, episode 8, Digging deeper, as Neil mentioned it to Peter Burke, as they're investigating a stolen dinosaur fossil. Now, in Evil Genius 2, in the side story, Serpent Surreptitious, begins with a scheme to steal the International Strategic Reserve of Maple Syrup from Canada in the Northern Patriot, or P-A-T-R-I-O-T, states. But again, the CBC reportage, the podcast, and the... Uh, uh, the uh, TV episode I think is available on YouTube. Now, let's put this in basic uh, perspective. Because the proximity of, of Quebec to the, uh, to the Canadian border, and I'm uh, just bear with me for a second. Quebec is not part of Canada. It is, but it's not. So you got the U.S. to the south in Vermont. You got New Brunswick, which is the link through Ed Edmondson and Kedgewick to northern New Brunswick, the Gas Bay Coast. Nova Scotia, PI, eventually Newfoundland, and southern U.S. So you're looking within a 200 to 400-mile radius, you could get many points. Now, as you know, I-95 is a connector, True Holton. Uh, TransCanada is a connector, Edmondston, Port Andover, all those areas. So, again, $10 million in fines. Now, uh, if there's a shortage of maple syrup on the market, if it goes up, uh, this may never happen again. But the cost of the increased security. But whoever kept up with this, because maple syrup has a product, and I hope you bear with me in the U.S., your, your manufactured maple syrup, it's not the same. People desire the real maple syrup. There's a premium. So based on milliliters, you're looking at 400 to 500% of markup. Like the maple syrup cookies, you know, it just maple syrup flavor. But for certain people, maple syrup is like liquid gold. And these guys saw an opportunity to take advantage of the trusting Canadian way, which we are. But you got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, let's put this in perspective. 18.7 <laughs> million could buy three free agents for the Blue Jays for one season, could win them in the World Series. 18.7 million could buy 
technically three or four players for the Montreal Canadiens for one season. Eighteen point seven million is not chump change. What was what was really amazing here? He never stole more. There was in a CBC report said he easily could have sold sold twenty, thirty, forty million. But the problem is with any heist like the Great Train robbery and all that. Or if you watch it, Goodfellas. Can you imagine you redid Goodfellas based on this heist? You know, uh, <laughs> so Americans, you think you're, you're the kings of criminal uh, enterprises? All I can tell you, the great maple syrup heist, as it gains momentum over the years, will go down in one of the greatest moments in Canadian history because two things were involved, the gullibility or the quietness or the, the trust of the Canadian people and the popularity of food stuff, like if Donair was Donair sauce was a was a product that not everybody could have, you know we would make up a, a value to that. For again, for some reason, maple syrup in Canada has been a lasting legacy. It is the national topping of 39 million people. Every immigrant who comes to Canada, every person is in Canada, nobody really hates maple syrup. I met only two people that hate maple syrup and the other uh, RCP officers because they had to work on the investigation of this maple syrup place. So ladies and gentlemen, if you know anybody in the Kendrick region that can basically rat out any of the maple syrup heisters <laughs> that pocketed money, please let the RCP know at one eight hundred NB Crime Stoppers, you know the number eight four seven seven tips. Uh, I'm just joking. I don't really, I don't really don't see. I'm no longer a reporter for the for the North Shore region. I left in two thousand eight, but if I would have stayed, I would have covered this case. Can you imagine the front front page of the Capitol Tribune? Sweet sweet robbery still unsolved. <laughs> Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what we're doing with our true crime podcast across Canada, give us a like, comment, or subscribe. And if you're listening to this, re-listen to it to a family member. Get some good no-name pancakes. Put some, you know, put some maple syrup on the top. Do do maybe a little bit of whipped cream. Nothing beats maple syrup. Listening to the Maple Syrup Ice podcast by CBC or these other shows. You must treat yourself, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good evening and sweet dreams to you. Bye.